do today, our time is just to walk through quickly from my perspective. Um, having been an entrepreneur, you heard about the, the reference to that was, uh, which was actually an interesting spin out company from Notre Dame 10 years ago. Um, I had the distinct pleasure of being involved with and leading for a number of years and then left that to now. Uh, left the day to day role, still very active on the board of that as well, since the cool things we're doing there. But not here to talk so much about that as, as, as kind of a look forward for innovation and entrepreneurship here at Notre Dame. A little bit more institutionalized, a little more about sort of the process behind it. Um, and again, how we manifest itself in many different ways across the university. So, um, so what do we have really here? I mean, you think of it at one level. We talk about, you know, what I call sort of the three I's. I'm going to focus on this kind of throughout innovation, incubation, and investment. Really, sort of three, three key ingredients, if you will, to a healthy ecosystem of entrepreneurship um, and innovation. Innovation at the top there, of course, what do we have at Notre Dame? We have these world-class centers, labs, institutes, really act as kind of that engine, that brain power. Where is it coming from? The facilities. I just did a quick check. We have actually over 50 centers and institutes here in the University of Notre Dame. Now, not, not all of them are focused on research, per se, but a great many of them are, and they cut across all the different colleges, you know, business, science, engineering, architecture, you name it. Um, so we have a great foundation, if you will, on which to start. Incubation, so when, in addition to that, when the ideas do start to percolate, we want to figure out ways, could we take these ideas to market? We've got a great support system of, of incubators, support services. Uh, I, I mentioned here including commercial and advisement and mentors to, to foster these promising ideas. So again, great, great institutes, great facilities, moving it through a cycle of, of leading to, hey, I've got something, I need to incubate it, I need resources. Many times, again, those are human resources. I need, I need uh, mentors, I need people that have been out there and done this before, being in those days, who can help me really figure out and says it's, it's going to be a promising idea for the marketplace. And then finally, investment. There will get that, you know, you will get to a natural point in time if your idea is ready for a prime time, so to speak, where you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get this thing rolling into the marketplace. And so, again, we, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this specifically in a few minutes, but we do have this new fund, the Irish Innovation Fund, which I'll mention. And of course, this network of investors and alumni that will help launch that. If you heard about the Irish Angels, um, the Notre Dame Network, and that expresses itself again in many different ways. One of which is, of course, you know, good ideas have the ability to really attract, attract interest and attract funding. Now, where does the STEAM fit into this? So again, the STEAM is a one-year master's program started uh, four years ago. Um, Let's take a look at it again, and, and well, I'll back up for a sec. So again, you've got all of this as a foundational structure in a way that, that should really push innovation here in Notre Dame and entrepreneurship. As a Steve, think of it as kind of one academic program that's going to help that happen. Again, all you can have all of this in the world, but if you don't have the human capital to drive it, and what we're seeing these days is more and more of our great ideas are actually coming from the students. There's a woman uh, visiting here from Stanford who I heard speak last night and also this morning, and she said a really interesting dynamic at Stanford is in the last 20 years or so, maybe 25 years, she said it used to be that maybe 80, 90 percent of all the really great ideas were coming from the faculty. She said that slowly kind of flipped around its head now, 80, 90 percent of the great ideas are coming from the students. Um, they're young, they're fresh, they get this entrepreneurship world, they get innovation, um, they're very creative, and now again, how do we build a pathway to let them shine when the ideas come forward? The STEAM is, is I think, one such academic program and vehicle for that to happen. So what is this theme today? Well, again, it starts with Father Soren's vision for a powerful force for good in the world. It was essentially combined, put together by three of the colleges, Engineering, Business, and Science. The first interdisciplinary graduate program in the history of Notre Dame started four years ago, um, STEAM. And um, today, if you look just quickly at the program, again, in its fourth year, it's an 11-month master's program. Three key elements to it, we're giving STEM-educated undergraduates, the opportunity to get a really sort of uh, immersion into the business world through business courses. They keep their hands dirty with some graduate level technical courses they're taking and then it sort of capitalizes, it comes together into a commercialization thesis. So this is a capstone thesis where they're actually taking an idea from the university and figuring out how do I bring it to market? What's my go to launch strategy? It's a full scale business plan and commercialization plan that they have to defend in front of the thesis committee at the end of their Combine that now with the Irish Innovation Fund, which again I'll talk about here in a minute, that just kicked off about two months ago, which is actually housed within the ASEAN program. Um, we actually are located in Innovation Park, right across the street, so we're 
in the midst of that incubator and in the midst of, you know, 30 or 40 CEOs and parents and people running around all day. It's great for our students. It's great uh, for the sort of environment and culture of entrepreneurship that's here at Notre Dame. And a quick reference to where our students are going. So in the short, very, very short period of time that we've been up and running, you can see by the names up there that a lot of uh, the large technology companies, large name consulting companies are attracted to our students and are being have hired them as well as we've had some students who totally go out and get involved with their early stage companies right from the get-go. You look at our class, just a few things, 32 students, about a third of them from Notre Dame undergrad, about a third of them international. And this year, we have three of the 12 semifinalists uh, presenting in the McCloskey Business Plan competition. Three of those teams are esteemed teams. We're real proud of that. Um, that competition is going on in a couple of days, so we hope in the weekends that maybe we'll have some winners in there, too. What does the future of esteemed look like? Well, going forward, we want to grow the program. So from the 32 students today, we want to probably get that up to something like 70 or 80 students over the next few years. Um, we're really kind of rolling out the welcome mat here for, for founders. So we're actually out there looking for young people who may want to come back to the graduate program, incubate an idea. Their research idea, their cash on thesis idea could be their own. So we want to sort of walk them in the door and say, hey, if you've got a great idea and we can align you with the faculty member here, we can, we can basically incubate your idea um, as your thesis. And hopefully have a spin out company at the end of that. Um, corporate sponsor students, so hopefully in this class coming up, we'll actually have an opportunity to spend a lot of time with corporate partners, corporations, really saying to them, hey, why don't you consider sending your employees back? I mean, these are people that work three or four years, they're 26, 27 years old. Um, the company look, at that point sees a lot of talent and a lot of potential in them, and they want to invest in the master's degree for them. The nice part about that, too, is that they can come back here and actually work on a corporate sponsor capstone thesis project and this will have to be something coming out of the university. I think we're going to see some traction there. That will diversify the class. It will actually get us probably some older students over time, much like we've seen happen over the last few decades in the MBA programs across the country. Um, we're talking about a Chicago expansion in 2014, so can we actually roll out a program uh, to capitalize on obviously a much, much larger population base in Chicago. Really figuring out ways to engage the full graduate community including PhDs, postdocs, etc. So um, if we're really, really going to turn this flywheel of innovation here in Notre Dame, I think one of the areas we've got to look at are what about the PhD students, what about the other master's degree students, and somehow tying them into this uh, infrastructure in a much more cohesive way. And I think esteem can be a vehicle to do that. Um, obviously increase the number of viable startups coming out the back end, and also we even began to talk about should we have, we're really going to foster the culture of entrepreneurship here in Notre Dame that could extend beyond technically trained folks. So we've got a master's program for non-technical folks um, that would also focus, again, ultimately on a capstone thesis, ultimately on entrepreneurship and innovation here at Notre Dame. I mentioned the Irish Innovation Fund, so down here sort of in this investment piece, so let's take a look at that. Um, so here's the way that the fund is going to work, and we're going to sort of roll this out operationally over the summer. Um, so we're going to invite business plans that can come from any student around the campus. So it can be undergraduate, graduate, again, focusing on those other graduate programs and those PhD and postdocs as well. Um, every business plan that comes in will go through the esteemed funnel, if you will. And what we mean by this is we're going to actually have the esteemed students in class essentially be the front line for due diligence. So they're going to actually sort of tear into these business plans. They're going to be looking at where the mentors will come into this, actually assisting and how we kind of put the mentors together with the plans, the coaching. And ultimately, they will make the final recommendation on whether a business plan that they've received is essentially deemed investment credit worthy to be able to go up to the fund's advisory board and make a recommendation for the fund. This, a uh, little bit about how it came together. So this was, it's a three and a half million dollar fund uh, through the benefaction of uh, Phil Purcell, who's a member of the board of trustees. Um, we've created a four-person advisory board. You can see the folks up there. Um, Phil, Ted McCourtney, John Lynn, all board of trustee members here at Notre Dame, uh, along with myself. And then, again, I mentioned operational in 2013-14. So we'll actually really mostly roll this out with the beginning of the new class, the new esteem class that will start actually July 1st. And focus. So this is, uh, this is a little bit about what we're doing in the community. Um, we thought, and I, and I think the university thinks, that if you're really going to have a true culture of innovation and entrepreneurship, it can't, it can't be contained within the walls of Notre Dame. It can't
can simply be something that you pick up and export to Silicon Valley or to Boston or some of the other hubs around the country. We have to figure out at some point where does it spill out into our own? And where do we really start to see some of the benefit of this in South Bend and in the surrounding communities in the Michigan region? So about a year ago, we put together a group called In Focus. The movable needle lens is focus of entrepreneurship focused on economic and community development. What we did is we said, well, we want to, what were the goals? We want to expand the ecosystem in local and regional, uh, in the local and regional area. Um, <clears throat> we want economic and community development with entrepreneurship as a centerpiece for that, to really drive that. And again, to do that, we're going to need to attract and maintain talent. We started out with, with really thinking this would be top graduate students. How, what would give them a reason to stay in South Bend? So they, we came out of a steam. We started to focus uh, with this sat down with the mayor, sat down with some other people, uh, CEO of all around town, educators, people here at Notre Dame, came up with Enfocus. A little bit about the program, launched last spring, and we set it, essentially set it up as a one-year paid fellowship program. So we had to go out and raise money for this. So we went to people like the city of South Bend, like some private industries, both of the major hospitals, the city of South Bend, school board, Transpo, a number of clients that basically got them to fund what would essentially come back to them and consult it from these seven esteemed students. Um, we had three goals, again, for the companies. Through a consulting model, we wanted to help those companies grow and change. Um, we wanted to create a tethered, what I call a tethered entrepreneurial experience for the fellows. So, you know, when you're graduating in, from any level, undergraduate or graduate, and you think you might want to be an entrepreneur, it's a big leap to actually go to do it. And most of the stories we hear about are, you know, people that max off credit cards go to great financial risk, you know, sleep, sleep on somebody's couch for three years, try to figure out what they want to do. This actually created an experience where the fellows are getting paid, they're actually paid fellowship program. We actually even put a, uh, a living uh, living quarters together for them downtown near the river where it's seven of them living together. We got somebody to build out the top. We give them a rent subsidy. So they're living and working together literally all the time. Anytime you have an apartment, your personal apartment with seven people, it's got life. Usually late into the evening. Um, we wanted to focus on can we create opportunities for new startups, and again, maybe with the launch of property being retained by Enfocus, so over time that it actually it helps become a self-sustaining model. A 70-30 rule basically meant that we went into this thinking 70% of our time would work on local projects for the clients, the other 30% would actually be community work. Um, and again, the partners are for-profit, public sector, nonprofit. There is a board of directors that's kind of guiding this along with a board of committed mentors and advisors from the community. And that's actually been, I would say, the secret sauce uh, down here, is we've just had some outstanding people, actually mentors, students, these are the people, the fellows, but former STEAM students, in, the, in and through their projects. Some of the outcomes, we've had uh, really great success so far on the economic impact that we've demonstrated for the clients, um, both in terms of revenue generation and cost savings. Um, we're starting to see more of this entrepreneurial ecosystem with you know, some of these people now being offered jobs to allow into the smaller companies to stay in the area, help drive innovation and change in established companies, as well as there's, I think, at least a couple of startups that look like they may come out of this. Um, it's all about the brain game, not the brain brain, it's here in the Michigan area. Um, and again, creating entrepreneurial opportunities for our own focus to come back to that other entrepreneurship experience. And focus of the future is, um, what are the goals? Well, we want to expand the fellowships. We want to create a second year fellowship experience for the best and brightest. So actually even the seven fellows we have now, maybe the three or four of them actually stay a second year. Build an internship program, not just here in Notre Dame, but in all the surrounding uh, colleges and universities. Um, we have applied for a $3 million grant for the Lilly Foundation. We expect to hear about that in this, this summer. That would be obviously a game changer in terms of funding. Um, Again, attract and expand client base for both for-profit and non-profit entities. Big focus on social entrepreneurship, big part of my background here, but when we talk about that 30% of the community, that isn't just focused again on nonprofits uh, as they exist, it's also really getting in with both nonprofits and also looking at for-profit models that might really drive you know, significant social and economic and environmental change here in the area. Um, we want to attract more uh, mentors and advisors and actually prove we actually put the blueprint together for a structured training process and how we can take her. Basically, intake mentors, train them, and then essentially match them up with the opportunities in the community. And it, <coughs> for me, this is a lot like the ACE model here. Um, so if you're familiar with the Alliance for Catholic Education model, it started in 20, 25 years ago. 
I actually think we have the potential here to expand and focus first across northern Indiana, statewide, nationally, and internationally. Two of the, or three of the seven fellows this year in the program are actually international. And they're really talking quite seriously about how to take the model of and focus back to Ireland or back to Columbia, where they're from. 742 goal. So this was our initial thought of how do we say, what does success look like in a real sort of you know, snapshot? We have seven fellows. The goal was that we get four of them basically to stay in the community long term, actually decide to locate here, to live here in South Bend. And two of those actually starting businesses. So of the four, two are actually entrepreneurs that are creating opportunities, creating jobs in our local community. Finally, I want to share with you um, just a little bit of kind of a cool thing that's going to be happening here in a couple months. And I think this is just more of a reflection of how does the outside world begin to see Notre Dame as a center for innovation and a center for entrepreneurship. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with Ernst and Young. They have an international program called the Entrepreneur of the Year Award competition that we're here to say to do about 55 other countries. Um, and uh, here we go. So um, if I look at EY Ireland, group now about 300 plus people in this group. Every year they do a CEO retreat. Um, they've been to China, India, Western Silicon Valley. This year they decided they wanted to come to the United States and actually spend time both in Chicago and New York. Um, it's a long story, but that's suffice it to say once we heard they were coming to Chicago, we thought maybe they should come and spend some time with us in Notre Dame. So that's what they're going to do. So they're going to come to Notre Dame and then on to New York. A little bit about this program. This is a hundred. There's about 140 people that will be coming here in mid June. These are uh, 140 of the most accomplished entrepreneurs in Ireland. You know, if you're familiar at all with the recent vetting process on that, it's actually quite uh, thorough, very rigorous. So if you bubble in the top and actually win this thing, you're you're uh, you've done a lot of things right. And these are also people that run both smaller and mid-sized companies, but also you know billion-dollar plus organizations. Um, they will be here for a series of academic sessions, panel discussions, keynote speakers. Uh, Father John and the entire the leadership is, is intimately involved in putting this together and rolling out the red carpet. Um, again, not just with Notre Dame leadership, but Ernst and Young Ireland and the Naughton family in Ireland. Um, showcasing Notre Dame's entrepreneurial ecosystem. And again, a social impact focus. There'll be, mul again, multiple conversations going on. One of them will be, though, what do we mean by this thing we call social entrepreneurship? For example, this one we're going to talk a lot about Haiti because it turns out they've already created a foundation and doing a lot of interesting work in Haiti. And we're going to sort of talk about what we're doing in Haiti as well and who knows what may come out of that in terms of collaborative efforts. Um, they're bringing a bunch of media with them, so what's going to happen here at Notre Dame will be broadcast on live radio back to Ireland. Um, the leading financial writer for the Irish Times is traveling with them. They also broadcast it and it'll be live on our television uh, in the fall. And, of course, I couldn't leave Notre Dame without a little football one-on-one. We've actually got uh, Luke Holtz coming in uh, for one of the nights that they're here to, uh, to introduce them a little bit to American football. So um, the point of that was really just to say there's a lot going on here. It's interesting when you get that validation from the outside world. So you know, there's a major, major international group like Ernst & Young, quite an accomplished group of entrepreneurs that certainly have said, well, no, Chicago and New York are not, thank you very much, but very attractive to come and see what we're doing in Notre So we'll have, as I said, about 140 of them here um, in mid-June, which we're real excited about. So those are really my comments. And it really, again, it's really just meant to sort of walk you through very quickly you know, what, what's all going on and, and how do we define an entrepreneurial ecosystem here at Notre Dame. There's many, many moving parts. It's not all in one college. It's not all in one institute. It's not all in one classroom. You know, when you think about, oh, did someone take entrepreneurship 101? Is that what it takes to be an entrepreneur? Well, of course not. I mean, there is an academic side to it. But there's many, many other parts and moving pieces here that are, that are worth talking about. So this was a real quick snapshot, really obviously from the esteem focus and what we're driving, we're driving not just through esteem, but I would say innovation park being on the admission park around town. It's all about that and that. It's all about sort of creating opportunities here at the university for a lot of people to plug into it. 